My name is Kartik Chandran. I'm a professor of microbiology and immunology at Einstein. I run a research lab of about 15 people, and our interest is emerging viruses. So these are viruses that usually infect animals and that jump into humans for reasons that we don't really understand, and then are able to spread in humans and cause disease. We've spent a lot of time working on Ebola virus, but have also more recently worked on other less well-known emerging viruses, such as hantaviruses. And now most recently, we are uh, involved in trying to understand the immune response in people that have COVID-19 infection, and then trying to develop antibody-based treatments that we could use to help people that are infected uh, during this pandemic. So you know, we were actually working on three different broad questions or projects related to COVID-19. The first is to try and understand how different individuals, their immune response to infection changes over time. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to be able to get samples from patients here at Montefiore Hospital every day over a period of time to try and understand at what time they start to make antibodies against the virus. How does that response wax? How does it wane? How long does it take? And you know, how do people differ in terms of the type of antibody responses that they make? And could we somehow relate that and other sorts of variables in their response that we can measure from their blood? to the severity of their infection and how they recover. The second project sort of jumps off on that first project to try and find individuals that uh, make a very strong um, immune response in terms of uh, antibodies that they make against the virus. So antibodies are these Y-shaped immune molecules that latch onto the virus and lock it and hold it in place and prevent it from infecting the cell. And they can also kill cells in the body that are already infected we're part of a larger project that's led by Dr. Lisa Amprovsky here at Einstein Montefiore. And the goal of this project is to find people that have lots of COVID-19 specific antibodies in the blood and then essentially uh, distill out their plasma, which is sort of the liquid part of their blood, take away all the cells and give it back to the person, but just take the liquid part of, the, of their blood that contains all these antibodies and then give that to patients that have who have been infected and are having disease due to COVID-19. And the hope, and there's some encouraging initial data, that the antibodies that we're essentially lending from one person to another, this is like a form of instant immunity. The person that's actually sick hasn't had a chance, have a chance to make these antibodies yet. So we're actually giving them these antibodies to someone else. There's reason to be optimistic that these antibodies are going to be, uh, have some effect in being able to reduce the severity of the disease and help this person fight the virus uh, on their own. The third project goes one step further. And once we find these antibodies, we can actually genetically manufacture them in really, really huge quantities because we'll actually know how to program cells in the lab to produce these antibodies as a, as a drug, basically. And so now the problem with plasma, although there are many good things about giving plasma, plasma is a very precious resource. It's somebody's blood and there's only so much of it. Um, the advantage with going from there to antibodies uh, individual antibodies is that we can manufacture them in giant vats and we can produce kilograms of them to give to lots more people. The problem, of course, is that it takes a while to go from plasma to antibodies to manufacture them and get them to the point where we can treat people with them. So the sort of progression from screening people to giving plasma is something that can work in the short to medium term and in hopefully in the longer term we and others will develop monoclonal antibodies, which are these specific antibodies from individuals that can be manufactured and given to lots more people. So that's, uh, that's the hope. There are many different people in many institutions, many companies, many parts of the world that are working on all of these types of therapies with antibodies. And the hope is that, you know, collectively, uh, we will able, be able to generate a number of such molecules that could be um, used as drugs, because right now the need is, is quite severe and it's going to continue for some time. One of the most like wonderful, gratifying things for me is just to watch the, the community of clinicians, scientists, educators, communicators, like really coalesce and work together. Like data are being like tweeted out so that, you know, right out of the lab, you know, usually there's this long process. You want to get peer reviewed. You don't want to get scooped. Now data are being deposited on these archives. People are sharing protocols completely openly. And, you know, like we want to start sequencing, you know, viral sequences for this virus in the Bronx because there's very few sequences uh, out right now. 
And there are protocols on the web and there are people here in New York City that are willing to share everything they have and everything they know. So we can just jump on and start doing that too, right? Like, so humans have this amazing ability to work together, to, you know, sort of put aside all the normal, you know, BS and actually come together and get stuff done. And I think we're also seeing that. So these sort of events bring out, or can be horrible, but they can also bring out the best in, in all of us, I think.